Hi guys and welcome to your daily tower reading for Saturday the 2nd of November 2019. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. I bought this Halloween tarot thinking that it was going to come in way before the 31st of October, but it just came in yesterday. So I want to use this Halloween tarot today because we're still in that Halloween time and Halloween themed cards like with the other ones I only use once a year so let's make sure that we use these before next year can't wait that long okay so let's have a look and I'm going to shuffle the cards so we're unboxing and we're doing a reading so it comes with a little booklet Oh, I love the back. So quirky and cute. I love this. I saw this on Instagram. That's why. I, ow, ow, ow. Yikes. One of my nails went upside down. Um, I saw this on Instagram. A tower related injury I just had. <laughs> um, and they were so cute and adorable and, and funky. So there's the story. Here you can see some of them. Really cute. Yeah. So let's have a look at what these cards want you to know for um, Saturday the 2nd of November. I'm going to give them a shuffle. And while I'm shuffling the cards, my new website has launched. The website that shows that I'm now back in Glastonbury and that I'm settled back in here. And it's been streamlined and the purchasing process has been much made easier and there's a members area where you can see your accounts and your orders it's very it's very um it's very good um and so hip hip hooray to erin for making a wonderful website she really outdid herself and you can pre-order my tarot cards that are coming out the gregory scott tarot they should be out in the next few months I hope they come out before Christmas, but I can't guarantee that. Um, it's the Gregory Scott Tarot, and that is the tarot based on what I think it should look like. So I gave the artist a document with the cards and description for what I want each of the 78 cards to look like. And he's drawn that. So it's really fab. So let's see what today is about. Okay. The hero fans love it. These are so cute. The eight of imps. Wands, fire. And the king of bats, the king of swords. I'm just going to double check with the leaflet if bats is swords. The suit of bats, 29. Yep, swords. Great, awesome. The Hierophant is a major arcana card. It's the fifth card of the major arcana. And it represents being, getting access to the kingdom so to speak, being allowed into the institution, having the keys to be allowed in. Here they're making fun of it in a way because what being in means, means being mummified and really boring and you're stuck in some sort of institution, whereas you could have fun and party with all the pumpkins and the black cats and the cats are playing with the, with the bandaging and unwrapping him. Very cruel. So... They're making fun of institutions in a way. So you may feel a bit naughty or cheeky and you may not have this reverence or respect for these institutions in your life that you've had before because you've had your own experiences and you're no longer intimidated by authority figures or, you, you know, once you become an adult, you start, you start actually evaluating and making judgments for yourself and you become the hero fan when you take your power 
in life, so to speak, and you see what's going on and you inform yourself the way you want to inform yourself if you're interested in sports or if you decide that you need to learn about the occult, whatever it is, then you become an expert in that. And then when you go about your day-to-day -day business, if you meet a professor and he's writing a paper on the occult and you just read it and you happen to have studied this, then you're going to have a different opinion on it because you're an expert in that field. You're an institution in your own right and you have something to then react to. So today, you're going to be certain in your own knowledge. You're going to rely on yourself and you're going to feel like you're right. The next thing that happens, which is great, is that news comes in. And the eight of imps, imps are usually quite naughty. There's the second time I've used that. So I'm getting a little bit of chaos and naughtiness and these two don't seem to be best friends. I get a, I get a discord vibe, not, not a disco vibe, a discord vibe between these two. Like the, this is the way it is, the Catholic Church versus, um, King Henry saying, actually, I want to get married eight times and behead my wife. So I'm going to found my own church and break from the Roman Catholic Church. And because you won't give me my divorce, I'll just start, I'll just start the Church of England. <laughs> so that's the kind of vibe I'm getting. The eight of imps is information coming into your life very quickly. And imps are usually, yeah, a source associated with mischief and things like that. And they don't know what to do with these, these arrows. They're all just staring at them and flying around. One's dropped his. The others, they're all just flying to this house, delivering the news. So delivering the news to you, you're going to realize, hey, you are an expert here today. And you're going to be, it's kind of like you're forced out of your shell because someone in your life, the king of bats is another person in your life. It's going to have a lot of opinions today, a lot of thought, a lot of um, things are spoken by this person in your life and they speak as if every opinion they have is the truth. And you are triggered by that and you realize that you studied this subject for six years. Like, let's say you've been, you're a meditation expert, okay? And you've meditated for 20 years and you teach people how to meditate. And then you meet someone and they come along and they tell you how to meditate and it's completely the wrong information, first of all. And then they're telling you, who's like an expert, you're going to feel like, I have to speak up here and actually say, you know what, I disagree with your evaluation of, of meditation, for instance. I don't think it has to be this way. I think it can be this way. So there's minor conflict. And the eight of imps is the exchange of information and communication. So we've got a lot of things going on. We've got a Mercury retrograde, so communication is somewhat stifled and tricky anyway. So there is room for misunderstanding. Then today, here on Saturday the 2nd, if you're getting together with people, you may find that the information that you get doesn't sit well with you and you react. Or you may find that you're the one saying things which trigger other people and they react very badly to you. Now, miscommunication and Mercury retrograde, my, my phone that I film these, these daily videos on was full. So I was interrupted and now I'm going to have to edit the video and all of this stuff. So these are the kind of things we expect during Mercury retrograde. Annoying little things that mean we have, it, it takes us longer to do little things than usual. So be patient. Don't be super, super opinionated and say controversial things or try and stay away from controversy. Think of the silence of the lambs. <laughs> so don't be Hannibal Lecter, but kind of think of silence is an option. And the good thing about this is it's news. It's not conflict. They seem confused, but they're all actually going to the same place. So, you know, you may have something in common with the King of Bats or the Hierophant, and the information 
may kind of come together in a certain way. You could find if this person is, let's say it's politics and this person is very left and this person is very right. They could meet in the center somewhere and agree to disagree. I mean, you can have conservatives and, and uh, liberals in the same room. They can, they can actually coexist. No, that you don't die from actually spending time with someone who doesn't share all of your views. Yeah, shocking. I know, like, when I first um, started doing this kind of work, I realized that I can do certain things that I don't enjoy. That was an epiphany to me. Like, going to meetings in the beginning, I did not enjoy that, and I did it anyway. Before, I would have never done anything that I didn't enjoy. And it's just this kind of um, awakening that, you know, sometimes you have to do unpleasant things, I suppose, to to get a positive outcome, or that uh, sometimes you do have to stand up for yourself, or sometimes you do want to correct someone. But pick your battles. And if it's unnecessary conflict today, don't bother. And kind of, if you feel that you're right, then just keep that to yourself. The information that comes in, if it's in a letter and you can keep it to yourself, then great. Then you don't have the interference. But if it's something that everyone knows about and it's a project that you're working on with other people or friends or something that has to do with your health and now suddenly everyone finds out and people have opinions about it when it's none of their business, it's that kind of vibe. Do you see what I mean? And then they say things which aren't even true and then you are ill and on top of that, you're worried about what people are saying about you, that kind of stuff. So it can be a number of ways, but it's trivial conflict which can be resolved through communication and finding a common ground, you know, and agreeing to disagree. But common ground is the main thing that today is offering you because you can actually make friends or become friendly with someone who is very much your opposite. And those kind of friendships are great because they open you up to a whole new world. Like, let's say I was going to make friends with some guy who was part of the aristocracy or something. And you went to polo matches and clubs, fancy clubs and things in London. Then that would be a whole new experience. I think that's why people watch reality TV, because you can glimpse into other people's lives and other people's cultures without going there and making the friends yourself. You know what I mean? So... I really think that you ought to focus on, don't censor yourself, but be careful with, don't assume that everyone's going to agree with you. I think that's the main thing. Don't assume that. Someone may disagree. Someone may be triggered by what you're saying. So be careful with that. If you're talking about your suicide story and someone has just come out of the, you know, hospital a week ago and you're all having dinner and you're making jokes about it, they may not be ready for that, you know? So it's about unity and harmony and talking things out. So even if you do put your foot in it, or if another po person puts their foot in it, give them the benefit of the doubt the way you would want another person to give you the benefit of the doubt and the way you would want another person to give you the chance to explain yourself and to explain what you really meant. And when you do that, the conflict between you, I am being told, is going to be resolved. So it's a day of conflict resolution, despite a Mercury retrograde. And, well, or because of a Mercury retrograde, because a slight miscommunication occurs, and you can fix it, not by saying, okay, we have a choice. We can either communicate more, it's a Mercury retrograde, that may make things worse, or we can just turn our backs on this and hope it goes away and not communicate at all. Go for option one. Communicate, talk about it, talk it through. Uh, keep, keep discussing it. Despite the Mercury retrograde, you'll come to an understanding and you'll be able to find unity and friendship and peace with other people. Even if you don't like all of their views and opinions. Yeah. Because 
if you're only going to be friends or associate with people who abs absolutely share every one of your beliefs, then you can't have very many beliefs because, or no friends, because I mean, there are so many issues that you can take a stance on animal rights and left or right and um, fracking and nuclear power and affordable housing and the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK. I mean, no one's going to completely agree with you on every single aspect of that. And the one thing, just to summarize, is to be aware that not everyone in the world is going to agree with you. Okay, that's the only thing that you may forget. And if you forget that, that's when you put your foot in it. But if you're consciously aware of that going into the day and you pick your battles and you're silent at times, <laughs> then it's going to be much easier and better. And the great thing that you get out of this is you get to meet someone or you, you see something from a totally different perspective and a whole new world opens up for you. That's the gift of the day. Five, numerology number wise, five and eight is 13 and one is 14. One and four is five and five is freedom in numerology. And that's awesome because when you resent someone and when you dislike someone, it's like welding yourself to that person, okay? Because the resentment, the energy, it creates this black cord between the two of you, which pulls you together and you're super glued to each other. When you let go of resentment or you let go of a uh, grudge that you have towards someone, same thing really, then you liberate yourself from that person because you're now able to disassociate. You detach with love. The only way you can let go and break that super glue is to detach with love. What I do in my meditations, I put the, I put people I resent on stage and I surround them with gold and light. And I do that every day until one day they just walk off the stage and the resentment is gone. It usually, it never takes me more than a couple of days in my experience. So that's the way to let go of things. And today you have the ability to free yourself of a, of a resentment that you have or to free yourself of conflict that you have with another person. So have a wonderful day. If you would like a personal reading with me, then please get in touch via the new website, gregoryscott.com. Click on the book your reading now button on the front page or the shop tab to order your reading. You can see the different readings there. Um, and you can also see the new tarot deck, the Gregory Scott Tarot that's available on there. So have a look at that. In my personal readings, I use the tarot, I use astrology, and I use numerology. And I'm an intuitive reader, so I use the divination systems, but I also listen to what my guides then tell me as I do the reading. And that really makes it very accurate and specific. Yeah. So if you would like me to answer any of your questions, please just get in touch via the website, gregoryscott.com. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. If you really, really like it, then please share it online. That would be awesome. I'd be ever so grateful. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday and I'll speak to you tomorrow.